Hello everyone, welcome to Makeup Monday. I'm FCA and as you can see from the title, we're going to be doing a really interesting alter ego transformation. I think it's an appropriate time because with the season finale of Drag Race coming up of season 11 and everyone's really feeling good, we can get into that and Pride Month and all that stuff. So we're gonna get started. I would like to be very transformative. I'm not looking to make this a career because it's not viable for me. One, I'm terribly stage fright. Two, I'm not sure I would be accepted in, in that community because I am a straight female. I'm not looking into doing anything changing either of those things. Um, but I do love the artistry and creativity that comes with drag. I love the idea of alter egos and double lives. Um, it's one of the reasons why Illamasqua is my favorite makeup brand, even though they're not as accessible to me here in the U.S. And I also, I'm, we've been having crazy weather where I live in Ohio, and it was 80 something degrees and then it was 50 something degrees with rain and thunderstorms and it's really been affecting my throat so I do apologize I will try to edit out a little bit but I will be having lots of drinks of water so if there's weird random cuts it's probably due to that but let's get started with our transformation I as I said I'm really into the idea of drag but I couldn't do it, not only because there's nowhere anywhere close to me that has drag kings, I just learned about drag kings recently, which is stupid because obviously, logically, if there's drag queens, there's drag kings, but it just never came to my brain at any point. And I'm using Maybelline Master Studio Primer. It's just in the color 100, it blurs and smooths. Just the um, face studio line. Not everybody does primers, but I have really intense pores that are really easy to see, and I really think that primers do something for my very imperfect skin. And I looked up tutorials of people going into their drag personas, a uh, drag king personas specifically, and I learned some some really cool things. Some of the people, not all of the people, they didn't seem to really have a good makeup grasp, and I don't know why, that's just them. I'm using the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation because it gives a real natural looking skin finish because even though I'm going drag king, I want to have the most even and nice looking skin possible as anyone would if they were going to be going on stage. And that's another reason why I couldn't do drag is I'm in real life, I'm actually really, really shy and really stage fright around people I don't know and I would just freeze. And you really can't be afraid of the stage like that when you have a, when you're doing drag since performing and entertaining is, you know, your whole, your act and your gig and that's how you're making your living. And kudos to the people who actually have the gall and balls and audacity to do that. I'm not one of them. I'm too scared of absolutely everything in life. And that is why I will never go far in life because I am just too terrified of everything and everybody. <laughs> I also couldn't do it because I would have to give up everything in my entire life to, uh, see, I think I'm gonna layer that up a little bit more just because of the drastic unevenness of my skin tone. But this is a lightweight natural finish. It's a full coverage foundation, but it leaves a little bit more of, it's not super matte. I'll be making it a little bit more matte, but I really like the 
evenness that it gives to the skin and the flesh-likeness that it gives to the skin. I would have to give up everything in my life, as I was saying, because I would have zero s emotional support for such a thing because my, my father would, would kick me out of the house um, and disown me, as would the rest of my family. Because there is, there is no tolerance for any of that. It took a long time for him to accept that I just wear wigs in general. And so you really got to blend out with this foundation. It's the only flaw to it. And because it's a, I find it to be a little bit thinner and lightweight a foundation, applying it just doesn't give the best coverage this foundation offers with a sponge as opposed to a flat top kabuki style foundation brush. This is the Sigma F80. In case anyone is curious. And I would just be, so I would be disowned, homeless. My boyfriend would break up with me who also has no tolerance for that kinds of things. They even get upset when I dress up at Halloween as um, like Harry Potter, which I'll put in a picture of or any other time that I do a male cross-play kind of a outfit. Now to finish doing a little bit more skin perfecting, I'm gonna take care of the under eye. So I'm gonna use the Boing Benefit Boing Brightening Concealer. It has this peachy undertone correctness, which brightens up the under eye area and covers up the bluish purple that we got going on. Some people need an alternative brush, but I find that my Kabuki, just doing a nice patting motion, works just fine for blending underneath there. And my bosses are 68 to 72 year old army vets. Very, not the most open-minded people when it comes to stuff like that. Um, and there's just a total lack of understanding or even wanting to understand in that age group. The, the generation gap is amazing. And they're nice. They're nice people to a point, but there's just, there's this closed offness that comes to them um, that there just would be no acceptance with that. I have a few blemishes around my face, so I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Superstay Better Skin Foundation and I'm in the little color of light medium 30. And I'm just gonna use that to cover up the plethora of spots that are all over my face. I have mirrors over here, so if you're wondering why I'm, I'm looking that way a lot and not at the camera enough, it's because that's where my mirrors are. I had a really bad breakout happen recently and a lot of it is emotional because I'm really upset that I haven't gotten to see, speaking of my boyfriend, I haven't got to see him in a long time. To blend this out, I'm not going to rub it at all. I'm just going to use that same Kabuki brush just to go up and around my face in a padding motion to just really That'll help blend it and really just get it in there in an even way without wiping it away. Because if you try to swipe over when you're doing concealer, I find that it really just brushes it all over the place and doesn't actually concentrate the coverage where you're trying to get coverage for the spots. Which is counterproductive. If you're going to be layering, you at least want to make it worth it. But yes, I would become unemployed, single, homeless, and disowned all in one fell swoop. There just is no support or acceptance for that in my life. There's also no place where I would be able to perform. There's almost no places that even have drag shows around me for drag queens, the more common thing, much less, you know, a full drag show. Now we are going to go into the the big part of the transformations, um, which is like the contouring and the main makeup. So gonna start off 
kind of basic here and I'm going to be putting on using some Urban Decay Primer Potion. Now you might be thinking what eyeshadow are you putting on when you're going into a more masculine persona which stereotypically historically do not wear makeup which I think should change. If you want to wear eyeshadow when you're a straight male I think you should be able to go for it. I'm very open-minded <laughs> when it comes to things, but I'm just going to take a flat paddle brush and I'm just going to use, I'm using the Emily Edit, the Needs palette, and I'm going to be using the color Love, which has been well loved as you can see in my palette. And I'm going to just put that all over my lid up to the top of my eyebrow, just all over the place just to make sure that all of the, because I have a natural brown to my eyes, which is also why I covered them with foundation. And you don't have to cover them with foundation and primer. That's really just a personal preference for me. And that's just to give the eyes a real even color. Put that aside. Physically thirsty. It's important nowadays to, to differentiate that because that could go in a whole different direction really quickly. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take two different kinds of, I'm going to use to be doing a powder contour. This is the Chocolate Soleil from Too Faced and a contour makeup stick from May, um, Maybelline, from Wet n Wild. You could also use just a darker colored foundation if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stick and I'm gonna find where I need to, I'm kind of trying to line it up with my nose and go about halfway through the treak, the cheek, the treak, that's not even a combination of anything I was trying to say. And we're gonna go up to the ears, right to the center of our ears, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, try to line it up with my nose and scooch it off to go to the middle of my ear. It might be a little different on both sides because your profile sides are different. And then I'm just gonna make it a little bit thicker. I'm just doing sort of a pounce pull motion. And then I'm also going to go in, not quite next to it, but just a little bit over. Maybe it'll be easier on this side. Going to go down and just make a line going down just next to it. And then I'm also going to make a line just a little bit diagonal from the corner of your mouth. Sort of like if you were doing a puppet look. Just going to make a line right there. And then I'm going to take just on the corners of my nose, make two little triangles, and then I'm going to make two little lines right at the top of my nose. Then up here, I'm going to go just in the middle of my forehead, making a horizontal line with the cream contour. I find this just to be easier to do with a stick that's made of cream rather than anything else. And then I'm also going to make a lighter dash of that going down, not connecting those two, because I don't want them to connect. I really just want there to be a bit of a line there. It looks really weird when you do this part, but you gotta blend it <laughs> and it looks and it'll look a lot better. So I'm going to take the this contour brush from Real Techniques, it's just one of their fluffier brushes, and I'm just going to start mega blending. And I also find that creams 
look a lot more natural when you're doing a heavy contour as opposed to a powder which can look cakey especially when you're doing it on top of a cream foundation because I'm trying to create strategic shadows with the contour on my face and that's going to carve out my face to make it look a lot more rectangular as opposed to ovular. I have a very oval type of face, so I'm trying to square that off as much as I can. I'm gonna blend the nose, blend the nose a little bit there. Blend up here. This up here is making a bit more of a shadow. And now with that same brush that I used, I'm going to put a little bit of this, just tapping it right at the corner of my eye here. Oh, if I didn't say this is in the color Call Me Maple 1805, not 1805. I am having trouble with the, with the numbers today. And I'm just going to make a up and down motion because I don't want this to be concentrated. That's why I'm not using a crease brush because I really want it to flatten and really stay in that general area and not go too far away. And if I feel like I need a little bit more, which I do, I'm just going to do that again in the same spot. And go back over it and the reason why I'm doing this is because males have often more setback eyes so by creating a shadow here it's going to trick other people looking at me slightly into seeing my eyes as more set back than they really are going to make sure we blend up here again just trying to give a shadowy illusion that there are harsher that there's a more distinct thing going on there than there really is a, a BC precision contour brush but it's just a very dense narrow just a, it looks like a crease brush but for your face and we're gonna tap that off and what I'm going to do is anywhere I want there to be the strongest sign of a line I'm going to put that down there so here right over that contour that's cream just because I really want that to be emphasized. And then right here, up here. And then I'm also going to take this down the deep of my neck. And I'm also going to put a little bit right here. And whatever's left on the brush, I'm just gonna dust that along my forehead line entirely. I'm gonna take that same brush that we used before and just blend everything out again. That was really just for a placement. This is not only going to set that cream contour around our face, putting the powder contour on top of it, but it, as again, I said, it's going to really emphasize those shadows and make them more intense and make them last. Blend down the neck, and this is just to give the illusion of a stronger neck and a more masculine neck. And this is just to give the illusion of an Adam's apple. Right here, having these parts be lighter and then this be a little bit darker 
it's going to give a shape illusion right there. Some people choose to highlight the area to, to bring attention to it, but because the area is flat, making a shadow there with the contrast will create a bit better of a shape. It's gonna really make sure I get this blended because I don't want to look unblended just because I'm a drag king wannabe doesn't mean I want to be an unblended drag king. That's not helpful to anybody. I mean, it might, it might help some people who do their makeup. I'm not here to judge anybody else. Check mark triangle kind of a look. So I'm going to make my brows bigger. I'm going to make them thicker artificially. So I'm going to come out a little further, closer to the bridge top of my nose, then way, uh, quite a few centimeters from that. And making shorter strokes with this. And I'm, as you see, I'm going to try to make that triangle-like look. Gonna go under the brows quite a bit just a little under I recently got my brows waxed too so <laughs> that doesn't help I'm sure that there are plenty of more dedicated to the craft drag kings who maybe don't get their brows done because that doesn't behoove their job and I'm going to make the and instead of getting it tapered off, because that's a wax shape, having it tapered off is definitely something that you have done with shaping. And I don't know a whole lot of males who get that done. I judgmentally know a few people who, I, who I've seen who I felt could stand, who were male who could stand a little bit of a, you know, just... I'm not asking them to completely feminize their eyes or anything. Then as the final step, I'm going to take the spoolie end and just blend that through my actual brows, just as a final little fill-in. Make sure that the color is dispersed, that way it doesn't look quite as drawn on. Glue and erase or shave their eyebrows or what have you. Alright, so there are the brows. And now for the hair, for the hair part. There's a lot of hair going on. I have a lot of hair to take care of, but I'm just going to be using, oh, wait, let, let me get it. This is the wig I'm going to be using. This is the wig that I've used to do my Harry Potter look. I've also used it as an L cosplay from Death Note. I've also used it to do a Joan Jet look. Very versatile little wig. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And the way I'm, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my very long, wad of thick hair that I have, and I'm going to split it. People are always asking me, I wear a lot of short wigs, and people always ask me how I get all my hair underneath them. I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna take a, an absolute ton of bobby pins or hair grips and I'm going to start with it doesn't matter what color bobby pins you use for this part because your hair is going to be hidden and so I'm just reaching in my little bowl of them that I have and this is just to keep my natural hair out of the way and I'm going to braid my real hair. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have particularly curly or kinky hair, you might want to brush it or smooth it down before you do this. But for my hair, because it's just going to be wrapped in a bunch of knots <laughs> anyway, I don't see much point in doing that. It wasn't exactly wild and out of control in the first place. 
But once we get the braid down, I'm going to take, this is a very long, large bobby pin. Wrap this around the back of my hair like that. And I'm going to put this in that way. And then I'm gonna take another bobby pin and I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but I've crossed them over each other like this and it makes for a really, really strong hair grip hold. And you just wanna make sure that you pull, when you're doing your second one, make sure you pull that way you get any stray hairs off the back of your neck that may have been left over because that will tickle your neck all night and be very irritating and not to mention if it's a completely different color like mine is going to be from my wig having even just a couple single natural hairs stick out will be very noticeable but you get the bottom you see the curvy part of it? Make sure that is on your scalp because that is what is actually doing the gripping. People think that the flat end helps slide it into your hair, but it also is helping anything else slide out of your hair. So you wanna make sure that the flat part is up and that the part that's gripping is actually gripping to your scalp. And then if you have any other little baby hairs back here, just take another bobby pin hair grip and just push it up. And then not only to help keep your hair flat, but also to prevent itching. A lot of people say that wearing wig wigs itches their head. Get a wig cap and mine is going to be matching the color. It doesn't have to match. You usually get them in black or tan colors, but you can get white ones that you can dye if your wig is going to be a really bright, more colorful color. Then to make sure that stays on my head, and this is where, for me personally, I wanna make my hair grips match better to my, my wig, except for in the back. I have a little bit more leeway, but I still don't want to do anything too off color. Just because I have a short wig. If you have a longer wig, you have a little, again, a little bit more leeway, but I have a short wig. And since my wig is black, I'm going for black bobby pins just to make sure I need a lot of support because there's a lot of heaviness underneath this wig and I need to make sure that the hair underneath there is supported and I also need to make sure that my wig cap stays on because you don't want your wig sliding back and so you want to put one or two just in some key spots where you might notice your hair lines start to move. Then we're going to take and we're gonna color this part. I'm using a small flat brush just so that I can really control this because black tends to have a lot of fallout and you can use any black shadow. You could use a brow color if you have liquid brow color. But I also wanna keep this controlled just so it doesn't go all over my face because I'm gonna be adding some sideburns in a second. But to make it look more natural and you also, eyeshadow tends to swipe away and you don't wanna end up with, you know, black accidentally absolutely everywhere. Like it gets all over your fingers and stuff. Oh, and I'm using Jet from the Urban Decay Born to Run palette, if I, if I didn't say that. Just gonna put a little of that up here. You see, already getting fallout. If you have a dark colored fallout, push it up as opposed to anywhere else first, just so that it's pulling back to where you want the color to be. Just Anywhere you see your hairline kind of poking out, just put a little bit of color 
That way, if your wig cap does go back, no one will be able to tell where the wig begins and your real hair is. It's all about the illusion. Okay, now for the fun part where you get to add facial hair. Now, this is where drag kings can kind of go nuts. For the bases that I have, pretty much anyone who is doing a drag king look, you know, squaring off your face, thickening the eyebrows, chest compression of some sort, all of those things contribute to a more traditionally masculine look. But with facial hair, you can go as wild. Like I said, some people do this method for their eyebrows for this, uh, but I have a bunch of little hairs, which if you want to know where I got a bunch of little hairs from, you just cut up pieces of a wig or weave or um, extensions. You just cut them up about a billion times until you get arthritis. <laughs> that's, that's the method. So what I'm going to do is for my character, the character that I have in mind, I'm going to do this before I put my wig on. Everything's going before I put my wig on because when I put the wig on, it's going to be the collection. Um, for my, the envisioning that I have for my drag king persona, for my drag king character is using, I have a bit of an androgynous face. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. I don't want to go, I don't want it to look too artificial for me, for my personal persona. I kind of want, because I'm short, I'm only 4'11", and there's not much I can do about that. Um, so to kind of add to that, I think that having a little bit of a boyish charm for a, adding a bit of a youthful look as opposed to a beard or something. Maybe if I were to actually be developing into it, there might be a goatee added once in a while or something like that. But for for what I have going on, I'm really going for the heavy sideburn look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same, what I filled in my eyebrows with, and I just want to make sure, I'm going to make a light little line just going down. If you're wondering why I'm using little tiny strokes, it, it simulates hair a lot better than just a straight pull down line. To how far down I want this hair to go because by following my natural line of my, where my real hair is, it's going to make it look a lot more authentic and really, again, we're going for an illusion kind of a thing. So for the illusion, and that way I don't go too crazy with the hairs. Now you can use spirit gum, you can use liquid latex. I'm going to use a little bit of Duo, which is eyelash glue or facial adhesive. You want something that's safe for your face. And again, um, it's basically liquid latex is what this is. So I'm just in that area next to my ear where, and I'm not going past that line because I don't want the hairs to go past that line. As I said, that's giving me a guideline. That's giving me a basis. And you want to let that dry just a little bit to get a little tacky, just like you would wish with, um, if you were putting it on actual eyelashes. So I'm going to do that, let it give it a little bit of time. And then I'm just going to take my little hair bits and just start putting them on there. And it's really just straight up as, as simple as that. I'm trying not to get too many at a time because I don't want too much fallout going all over my face because that doesn't really help me. The freedom that real drag people have. And that's what I see, that's ultimately what I see that gum it. That's ultimately what I see drag as, as freedom and security, as the ultimate expression, the ultimate middle finger to societal rules and dictations, which is amazing. Now, 
because I have this intensity going on all over here, I'm also going to give my eyelashes just one swipe of mascara. Now that might seem a little feminine, but because everything else is so intense and guys, for some reason, guys are often given these lush lashes. And so I'm just gonna use that just because when you're on stage, you, you really want that makeup focus. So again, we're not going for heaviness. We're not going for super feminine. It's just to give our eyelashes a color coating. And now for our final touch, the moment of truth, our ultimate accessory, our wig. And you see here, you can see, like, I need to go a little bit lower here. Let me get that. Last but not least, you know, fix up your hair. I fixed mine in. I tucked mine in the back so that it didn't have such length back here. Um, left a little bit sticking out, but not a whole lot because it's not really the style I'm going for. I have my one kind of earring in. And just, you know, add your male cologne. The cologne I would use is Intenso by Dolce & Gama, Gabbana, because that's what I have. And uh, there you go. This is my Drag King persona character. And if you want to know the name that I'm given to my, to this kind of a look, I'm thinking of uh, Tommy Guns, because Tommy's got some guns. So yeah, uh, that is my my drag character and my drag persona. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the transformation. Let me know if you have a drag persona and you know the name and how far do you go with your facial hair and all that stuff or drag queen let me know that stuff too and I will see you for FCA Friday in the next Makeup Monday and I hope that the rest of you get to be more free in securing yourselves in situations than I am because this is as far as my 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 king can go this is as far as Tommy Guns can go in real life um, and that's, that's just the way it has to be. And it's a little sad because I would, I would love to go out like this, but I just don't have the ability to do that. So be free to yourself, even if that means doing a little gender bending. All right.